Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, we're going to talk about a new feature for Plex Pass subscribers, but also on the Plex free content side that has Plex automatically now detecting when end credits begin in a film or TV show and allow you to skip those end credits. And for movies that have post-credit scenes, it will bring you right to them following the credits. And just to give you an example as to how this works, I've got a video here queued up on the web player here, and it's just about ready to conclude. You can see we fade to black here, the credits will appear. What we're gonna see in the lower right-hand corner here in a second is skip credits, because my Plex server has determined that the credits here have started. And when I skip that, it brings me back out to the main menu. And this will work actually a little differently on TV clients, and I'll show you that in just a second here. But before we get further into this topic, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what else we can do with this skip credit feature. Now, as always, Plex has a pretty extensive support page where you can learn more about this feature and its nuances, and we're going to cover a lot of those nuances here as we roll forward. But first, I did want to show you the behavior of this credit detection on a TV device. So right now, I've got a Fire TV here going with the Android client, essentially. And we're just about to the end of this video again. And what will happen on TV boxes like this is that when it hits the credits, what it's going to do is detect the presence of those credits and then zoom out so that you can find some other things to watch. And this works a lot like how Netflix and other services work, except you're working with your own media here, so you've got a nice way to move on to the next thing. Now, if you do want to watch the credits, just hit the button again, and it will pull them up full screen, and you can read everything on the credit rolls as they're going by if you want, uh, but then, of course, you can hit the back button here and then select something else to watch from yours or a friend's Plex library. Now, this will, though, behave differently if Plex detects that there's content following the end credits. We're seeing that a lot in movies these days. So here's an example from the movie Frozen. I did have to blur some things out. But what you'll see there in the right-hand corner is a button to skip credits. So this is right at the moment the credits pop up. I click on the skip credits button, and it's going to go to the end of the credit roll and then play back the a portion of the film that appears after the credits are done rolling. So we don't get that next up screen here. It brings us right to the content that we might have missed if we turn the movie off uh, right when the credit rolls began. And there's probably a bunch of movies out there that have post-credit content that you might want to go back now and explore. And of course, Wikipedia has a list of every movie that has content in or after its end credit rolls. So you might want to go visit this page and explore things further to see if there's parts of movies you might have missed because you ended them too early. Now let's take a look and see how this feature works, how to enable it, and how we can tweak some of its settings. Now, of course, as usual with Plex, you want to make sure that your servers and clients are up to date in order to take advantage of this feature. It will enable credit detection by default when you update your server, but it may not go back in and scan all of your older content depending on your settings. So what I found in my library was that everything I added to the server after I upgraded it got the credit detections enabled, but the older stuff didn't. So what you can do here is either schedule it in your scheduled maintenance or uh, go over here to manage library and click analyze. And what this will do is go through and look at every film in your library and detect where those credits begin. This is CPU intensive, and if you're running it on a little NAS server like I am, it'll likely take a while for all this processing to happen. There is a cloud component to this, and I'll show you how to shut it off in a second. So if there are versions of the films that you have on your computer that have been previously scanned, it'll download the data for where those credits begin versus having to go through the work of doing it every time on every server across the world. Uh, so there are some things that might help speed up the process a little bit, but some of your films may have to go through a uh, complete analysis locally on the server, which will, uh, again, eat up CPU time. So you might want to, again, look at scheduling this, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, we can adjust things by going into Manage Library and Edit here. And if you go to Advanced, this is where you will see uh, the settings to enable or disable this feature. You might not want this. Maybe you've got a certain library that you don't need this on. So what you can do here is just scroll down until you see 
the option for credits detection and just click it off. Now, there's also a few settings inside of your server settings and the way you get to those is click on the uh, little tool icon here at the upper right hand corner and then find the server you want to have impacted by these settings changes on the left hand side. This is my NAS device here. And what I'm going to do first is show you that scheduled tasks option because if you do have a big library, this is one way to control how bogged down it's going to be. So what you can see here is that my maintenance window is from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. And if you have perform extensive media analysis enabled here during maintenance, it will do that analysis during that window but stop when the window ends. So that's a way that you can keep your server up and running for you when you are awake and using it. And then when you're not awake, you can have the server do the credit detection quietly in the background. Now there are some additional configuration options inside of the library setting of your server settings. And I'm gonna show you that now. And remember, each server you have has its own settings. So if you're running multiple servers, you've gotta do this in each. I'm gonna click on library here. And if I scroll down to the midpoint here, you can see that we can disable this globally. So you saw a minute ago, we were able to disable it for a specific library. But if I selected never here, I could apply this setting across the server. And then of course I could override this global setting on individual libraries if I want. Now, if we click on show advanced here, what we're going to get is a lot more here that we can tweak. And I know some of you may not want to use the online uh, function for scanning for credits. So if you go over here to marker source after enabling the advanced features, you can have it do local detection only. You could also have it only do online detection if you don't want to stress your server out. So whatever files that you have that match the cloud database, those will automatically get their settings, but it won't uh, do any additional analysis if one is not available. Uh, so I would suggest looking at this, especially if you've got a weak server like me, uh, there's a good chance that a file that you have is identical to something that somebody else has and it will uh, automatically set that for you. Now one important note about this cloud feature, the default setting here is set to both, try online first. And what that means is that it will look for an online match. If it doesn't find one, again, it's going to run that local analysis. And if this default setting is enabled, what it will then do is send to their cloud database a hash of the file that you just scanned and where the credits are located in that file. So if you're not comfortable with that, then set it to local detection only so that your local scans will not go up to the cloud. Again, by default, it will. Now, according to Plex, what happens here is that it is just hashing the file so that it can get a match into that database and it will not be sending any of your personal information along with it. But if you're not comfortable with anything from your Plex server going back to them, set it to local detection only, and it will only run locally on your machine and have no interaction with that cloud matching database. This is only for end credit detection. The intro detection works differently and doesn't have this cloud component. Now, if you want to see if Plex was able to detect credits in one of your films, what you can do for now is go up here to the more button, go over to get info, and this is on the web client. And at the bottom of the media info tab here, you'll see a button for view XML. And what this will do is pull up the raw XML of its metadata. And if you do a quick search for marker final, uh, you will see where those credits were detected. If you don't see a marker final uh, addition to this XML file, then it did not find credits after the scan. And right now, this is the only way to confirm that it was able to detect credits in a particular piece of media. Now, there's one last setting here to look at, and that is when Plex determines that a piece of media has been watched. Now, if we go back to our settings screen over to the library section here, you'll see that typically Plex will mark a video as played when you've watched 90% of it. But because we now have this credits marker, we can now add some additional triggers here for setting that uh, check mark to go on on a piece of media. So by default, when you enable this credit feature, it will mark a piece of media played when it hits 90% or it hits the first credits marker. And you can go in here and change the default position. So you could say 
I only want the credits marker triggering when something's been watched. The problem with doing this is that if a piece of media doesn't have a detected beginning of its credits, it'll never get marked watched automatically. So the default is probably the way to go, but you can make some adjustments here based on your preferences. And one of the things that we're going to look at in the future is webhooks, which is an advanced feature that has Plex triggering home automation, for example. At the moment, it doesn't appear as though there's a webhook for credit detection, but I suspect at some point there will be. And what's cool about this, when you think about it, is that once those credits start, you could have it trigger your lights to come back on, just like a movie theater. And that's a topic that we'll be exploring in a future video. So that's going to do it for this look at Plex credits detection. I'll put a link to the support document down below in the video description as things do change over time. So you can refer to that document in case something I've talked about here is out of date. And I want to thank Plex for their ongoing support of the channel and you for watching. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.